Good afternoon, episode 33. And I want to focus this episode specifically on Bitcoin versus gold. Now, I know there's a lot of people here who, who own Bitcoin, who follow me, who own Bitcoin. But there's also a fair amount of people who come from the gold space and, you know, who, who, who may own, be interested in, in potentially owning gold. And I want to go over why I think Bitcoin is so much better a trade than gold, but also what gold can teach us about the price of Bitcoin, okay? So I've been a gold owner for 30 years now. I've owned physical gold since 1992, uh, and I bought it at J.P. Morgan in Paris at the Place Vendôme, physical bars of gold in 1992. Um, I also own gold coins that I picked up 10, 15 years ago. So I own a number of gold coins as well. Uh, and I've owned the gold um, ETF, the GLD, on and off, again, for a period of you know 25 years. So I've owned that. And gold, since I first bought it, I bought it about $300. And it is up, it is up, um, seven times. Okay, we went from three hundred dollars to effectively two thousand dollars over a peer over that period of thirty years. But you know, it went up a lot in uh, two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve, and then it hasn't really moved very much since the two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve price. It took it almost a. Uh, took it almost a decade to get back to that price. It's climbed just a little bit since. So gold has been a, it's been a tough trade, uh, I would say, and it's been a bad trade relative to the S&P. So now the question is, how does gold compare to Bitcoin? And are these two things comparable? And I think the answer is yes. I think they are very comparable. And I think that gold does not, look good in comparison. It does not look good. So how would I compare the two? Well, obviously gold's been around for 3,000 years and Bitcoin's been around for 15 years. But as I said before, the fact that something's been around for a long time doesn't mean that it's a great, great store of value going forward or that it, it you know, the horse and the buggy was also dominant for 5,000 years. Uh, they had chariot races in Ben Hur in Rome. Uh, you know, even in the Middle Middle Ages, people were using horses, and that was the mode of transportation. And then all of a sudden, in, around 1910, the car basically replaced the horse. And there's this great picture of Fifth Avenue that I posted on Twitter, and you can see, you know, over a period of 10 years, all of a sudden there were no more horses and buggies and there was just cars in New York. And so, you know, you have this, there is this precedent for disruptive technologies uh, taking, taking, taking over very quickly. And I think Bitcoin is that kind of disruptive technology, right? So um, what is the use of gold really? Well, the use of gold is, it's rare, right? It's, uh, most of the gold that has ever been mined is out in circulation. It exists. It's very, very durable. It, 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 people have kept the gold. It doesn't get destroyed. It, uh, it doesn't get lost that much, and it, it's still around. It, and, you know, it's very hard to find gold. There's only a, a 2 or 3% of new gold that's mined relative to the entire stock of gold. So that's what they call uh, a high stock to flow of gold. The flow is low relative to the stock, or reverse, the stock is high relative to the flow. Now, Bitcoin has an even lower stock to flow, right? So as of this new happening, there will only be about 1% per year of new Bitcoin that is being mined relative to the supply of Bitcoin. So, so the stock to flow of Bitcoin is less. But they're both rare, okay? So it's not one is much, much rarer than the other at this point in terms of mining it. So that's not a, a, a critical distinction. What is a critical distinction is the price. Now, 
I'm going to show you this graph, and the graph is pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty revealing, right? Which is, here is the graph. And you can see the market cap of gold <laughs> is about $14 trillion right now. And the market cap of Bitcoin is about $865 billion. So the difference is you know, it's almost 15 to 1, okay? It's 15 to 1 difference between gold and Bitcoin. Now, uh, the obvious question to me is, hey, Fred, is this thing likely to, uh, to agree? Is the, is the price of Bitcoin going to match the market cap of gold? And I... I think it's going to more than match the, the market cap of gold because I think just like, just, like, um, just like the automobile is a superior technology for transportation, I think that the Bitcoin is a superior yardstick of value than gold. So why? Uh, about three reasons. The first is that... Bitcoin is, is completely and utterly transparent. So if you, wanted, if you wanted to look at how much gold I have in my vault, you're going to have to get all those bars weighed and uh, measured by a professional uh, assayer right, of the gold. So that's, that's, that's expensive. That's time-consuming. You need to get an expert on, on hand to do the, uh, the auditing. Uh, on the other hand, Bitcoin, I can tell you in five seconds whether your Bitcoin is authentic or not. Um, so that's the first thing. So the, the ability to immediately audit the, the value of the gold versus the value of the Bitcoin is just one enormous difference. Second difference is I can send the Bitcoin anywhere in the world to anybody almost... Uh, in, in a matter of an hour with, with finality, 30 minutes effectively with finality. Um, and with gold, you know, moving a large amount of gold requires an airplane. Uh, it used to require a ship. But uh, it, in any case, it's very, very difficult, right? The third advantage of Bitcoin over gold is it's much safer, right? So if you have gold... People could take your gold. Uh, you need to protect your gold. You need to put your gold in a safe deposit box. And if, it, if it's a lot of gold, you need to put it in a, an actual vault that's dedicated for this purpose. And, you know, that's why you have Fort Knox with armed guards and you have vaults in Switzerland with, uh, you know, built into the side of mountains with guards and so on. So, so it's, again, Bitcoin wins this... Very, very easily. So for these reasons, and the last thing is, you know, Bitcoin has a, a finite supply. It is mathematically finite. Whereas the price, of the there always is some possibility they're going to find some enormous new mine of gold. Now, a little bit of a history lesson in the uh, 1500s when Spain... Um, found large gold mines in South and Central America, Spain actually owned half the gold in, in, in the world, right? And they had, they had all this gold, and, you know, the price of gold actually went down because they had just discovered so much gold that, that nobody ever thought could exist, right? And so... You know, this mining of gold and the possibility of these new things is, is a flaw in the gold technology. So what do I think that means relative to Bitcoin? I think that means that pretty quickly, gold is going to be trade at a lower market cap than Bitcoin. I, I believe fundamentally that people are going to recognize Bitcoin for a superior uh, version of gold. And I think at a minimum... At a minimum, gold Bitcoin is going to trade at a premium to gold. So I think gold is not a terrible store of value right now, but I do think it could lose some to Bitcoin. So let's just assume gold goes up a little bit to 20, 
from say 15 billion to 20 billion. And I think then you have Bitcoin going up from 800 billion to 20 trillion. Well, that's a 25x difference in Bitcoin. And that brings us to easily a million dollars per Bitcoin. So that's really the one fundamental place you can anchor anchor um, Bitcoin. And because of all these other advantages, I think you can easily get to the two, three, four, five million later. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that we actually have, with this gold Bitcoin pricing mechanism, there's a very, very concrete way to estimate where Bitcoin's going on a price level. And I think that price is going to be a million dollars per Bitcoin. And, you know, if I had to say, uh, if you're young, I would definitely not sell your Bitcoin below a million because I think we're going to get there. Now, if you're 80 years old, you know, you'll get there, but the Bitcoin will get there, but you may not be around to, to go there with it. So I, I would say, you know, if you get to a couple hundred thousand dollars in your Bitcoin, maybe that's a, a good point to kind of call it quits because, you know, the Bitcoin does move in cycles. And, um, and I think that, you know, uh, there is a possibility for a sort of severe long um, down cycle for Bitcoin before it gets to a million. It's not, there's no, it may not be a clear path. But if you're young, if you're 30s, 40s, uh, 50s, you know, yeah, you, you might want to consider just holding on until we get to a million. So I hope that was useful. Um, I really do not think, <laughs> unless you, unless you, you know, really need, need gold for some reason, I think it's it's really not a great buy here, um, and I would not recommend owning it. Uh, I'm probably going to keep my gold just because it's you know it's uh, of sort of sentimental value to me, and you know I I did fine with my gold. It was a it was a pretty good investment for me, and the fact that I have it in physical form made me keep it. Um, uh, but I would not recommend anybody buy gold at this point. So. I hope that was useful. I'm sorry I was a little longer than, than I usually am. I'm trying to keep these things short. Uh, but I will catch you at the next episode. Thanks.